So our trial is being conducted as a um, as an intern as, as a multi center uh, international study. Um, uh, and it, this trial is a is a dose escalation study where we're going to be studying uh, initially two doses of our vector in in two separate cohorts that are going to be done sequentially. Um, with an optional third cohort. So what we do is we dose the first subjects, uh, we dose the first cohort, we review the, all the safety data. If, it's, if it looks good, then we go to the second cohort, then we'll review all the data and decide whether we need to go to a, a, a third cohort. So the patients have to have symptoms of disease that we're not treating at this stage, um, pre-symptomatic patients. So they have to have symptoms of disease and be aged 35 to 75 years of age. And they have to be able to live independently. Um, um, sorry, let me restate that. They have to be able, they, they can't be institutionalized so that they're not, if they're, they can't be in a nursing home setting. They have to be able to live in the community in order to be eligible for the trial. Um, so the, the trial is being done again sequentially, where initially we're going to dose the three subjects in the first cohort. Um, uh, and those subjects, again, there's a 60 day period between dosing of each subject. So it'll take, um, you know, six to nine months to dose the first cohort, and then we will go on to the second cohort, which again will take about the same amount of time. Um, the follow-up for each subject is two years, um, with an and then with long-term safety follow-up for five for up for five years total. Um, but the goal of the trial is really focused on safety, um, and then. And, with, and we'll also be looking at biomarkers, specifically looking at progranulin levels in the, in the cerebral spinal fluid to see if we're restoring um, uh, uh, progranulin levels to, to normal levels, or, go, or our real goal is to um, increase, as the, we observed in the preclinical studies, um, raise progranulin levels to superphysiologic levels to see if we can correct the, um, the deficit. And then this will allow us to pick doses based on safety and biomarker data for a, a second study where we actually test efficacy in the you know over uh, in a in a larger cohort of subjects, I, patient identification is really a, a, a critical focus of of our program at this point. Um, historically, genetic testing in frontal temporal dementia has not been uh, has not been done very very um, well. Genetic testing has not been uh, um, uh, done at a very high rate, so we have an extensive effort to enhance our recruitment through a sponsored genetic testing program and outreach to healthcare providers to um, educate them on um, the benefits of genetic testing and the, and, and the potential for therapeutics, not just ours, but other companies as well, if, if, if a specific genetic um, uh, uh, change is identified in a given, in a given in a individual, whether it's granulin gene mutations or other mutation, other gene mut genetic findings associated with frontal temporal dementia. So, so we have a big effort that is ongoing, an outreach effort to really educate the community with the patient advocacy groups about the benefits of genetic testing. And I think this will help not just Passage, but all, all companies that are looking to uh, um, run clinical trials in frontal temporal dementia.